You and I have had a lot of conversations around vast iterations, how to move forward. Um, today, Ad ID sent out a press release. The press release uh, had substance. It included some of the IB Tech Lab. Can you share with sure. the audience what the? So we've talked a lot about. We I've talked at the end of my presentation about embedded metadata, and the fact is, people in this on this side of the supply chain, actually people in broadcast in general, haven't got a lot of experience with embedded metadata and moving metadata in a standard manner. So what AdID is doing is we've actually, uh, we are submitting the XMP work that we've done uh, with, uh, with, at, with the digital slate to the AdID, uh, into the uh, IAB lab. So we, are, we plan to work closely with Scott and the, the lab team to work, take this XMP work through its paces and make sure that it actually does what we say it does and actually try throwing a few curveballs at it. So uh, we're, we're pleased to be part of the, the IAB lab and uh, look forward to as many of you participating in this work as, uh, as can. No, that's fantastic. I, I think that um, the next question I think maybe the audience should hear is outside of the broadcasters, the recommendation to uh, make an API call to add ID, is there some, some form of uh, expectation that the sellers in the room should have from a cross-screen uh, incremental revenue lift? And if so, after they deploy, is there some sort of time frame that they should, they should start seeing that money roll, start rolling in? Again, non-broadcasters, but of course, most of the folks in the room say, if I go do this, do I get money, right? Sure. So, you know, Christina talked about this a little bit. Uh, Jared talked about it this a little bit. There is, a, and we, we actually talked about it earlier in the day as well, the amount of inefficiency and the cost of the inefficiency in our industry. We've done some work at AdID relating to uh, what we call the, the, uh, the chart of, the pie chart of inefficiency. It's rekeying, reformatting, researching, repayment. If you think about all of those things, all of the effort relating to the identification of an ad, that costs about $2 billion a year in inefficiency. Ad ID is a joint venture of the four A's in ANA. So, the, uh, so uh, Bob Leodis of the ANA and I have actually talked a lot about, about this and one of the things he said is, we don't want to take money away from cross-platform video, cross-platform monetization. If we can save money and prove that efficiency saves money, we'll take that money and put it back into the supply chain, back into working media, and into some experimenting. You know, we, we talk about the cost of bringing new platforms into the, wor into the world of video. You know, there are new devices coming up, new, new opportunities. Here's an opportunity to actually take that money that, would, that is in inefficiency and roll it back into working media. And you've got that commitment from advertisers that are not gonna take that and put it below the line into sales promotion or other things. It will go back into working media and, uh, and be used for innovation. No, it's, uh, it's, that's fantastic. I think I, I've come on record, I and mean, a lot of the folks in the room know I don't like mud. Uh, and part of the tech lab, well, frankly, the, the biggest strategy and goal of the tech lab is to remove friction where possible to realize cost savings. At the same time, are there signals in ad ID that we believe we could leverage and then therefore advertisers would get a certain degree of transparency through this integration? And if so, what are those signals? And hypothesize maybe what could they be used for? Great question. We've, you know, one of the things, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot that's been written in other industries about interoperability and some of the things that interoperability can do for a supply chain. Innovation happens when you have increased interoperability. Because if you think about all of the, you know, a couple of people brought up um, some of uh, Terry Quaja's Luma charts today. When you look at that complexity, the first thing that somebody's got to do is recreate elements. You've got to recreate the metadata associated with an ad. You've got to actually re, you know, redo some things other people have done. But if you think about having those standards, you know, I've thought about some of the things like, things like f fraud mitigation. Right. You know, if you think about the fact that I actually have an asset here with metadata that's embedded inside of it, it's difficult to actually get the metadata into the schema that we've built for XMP, but there are also safeguards inside of AdID. There, there are rules inside of AdID that actually say you can't just stuff metadata inside of this. It has to be standardized, and it has to follow certain rules. So you can, I can envision a day where 
fraud mitigation is a big part of this. Um, and again, I've, I've talked about you know, the long tail of content consumption, you know, the cost of bringing on a new platform in video is huge. And, and you know, I don't know the, 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 all the details or all of the profitability of new platforms of content creation, but I would say it probably takes a long time for a content platform to break even or to even, you know, even, you know, break even or make money. When you start to think about having this, these kinds of standards, you start to be able to monetize that long tail in a much more efficient way. I, I, uh, I'm going to throw you a curveball here. Um, <laughs> do you have any questions for me? So <laughs> why is it that the interactive industry doesn't see themselves as a part of the larger supply chain? You know, video, for an example, you know, we, we've spent a lot, VAST is one, one standard. Actually, I know that you spent some time with one of my colleagues the other day. And you know, the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers do all kinds of standards relating to transactions and assets. What, and and you know, when you talk about transactions and assets, aren't they the same? What makes interactive media different? It's funny because the feedback I got from your engineer was like, well, if you go tell the broadcasters that, you're going to blow smoke out their ears. <laughs> um, now, it, it, I, I, and maybe some folks in the room agree or disagree. Uh, coming from the, from the newspaper industry, I was always the, uh, you know, the ugly stepchild sitting on a different floor, right? And I think it's a cultural thing uh, to a certain extent. Um, but at the same time, I mean, we have euphemisms and sayings, especially in the publishing world for digital, we publish first fix later. That's a taboo when it comes to analog or, or print media, mm -hmm. right? And so I think part of the, the power that we can do digitally allows us to do things that traditionally in, in other corporate cultures, uh, uh, it would be, like I said, taboo. So um, before I let you go, I want to talk through, especially with this group, uh, we've talked about the IB Tech Lab. Uh, and some of the things that uh, Jared had mentioned on, uh, we have the uh, Emerging Video Tech Group. Uh, it's a leadership group that's been focused on really four buckets, server-side integrations, in including ad ID, latency factors, cross-screen delivery, uh, and finally, viewability. Uh, these have been, uh, uh, a lot of the uh, topics have been bucketed here because one of the things that we're trying to do with the IAB is put together a, a life cycle process so that we're actually executing against uh, things like VAST and, and what the future would be.